What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Durbin Compound. If you haven't met me already, my name is Devin Durbin. So today on the channel, we're going to do some air filter changes on the W205 Mercedes. I'm going to show you how to do the engine air filter and the two cabin air filters. Uh, the one under the hood and then the one under the dash. So I hope that you stay tuned and I'm about to learn you some good information. Okay, first things first, before we get under the hood of the car, I wanna let you know that I purchased all my filters at Auto House AZ. Um, these guys didn't sponsor me for anything. Um, I have the receipt, I'll roll it in here. Um, they've been the same price both times, I, or all three times that I bought the filters. They've pretty much been exactly the same price. So their pricing does not change. If you were to go through your dealer and get these filters, I guarantee you they're gonna be a different price no matter where you're at in the world. Um, they're just gonna be different and depending on if it's summer or spring, I, the dealer prices change. So uh, I'll put a link in the description below uh, to their website and I'll also put all of the technical information for part numbers and things for these filters so that you're set up for success. So let's get under the hood and let's get this done. All right guys, first things first, we're gonna go and do the uh, engine air filter. So this one is pretty straightforward. We just need to take off our engine uh, air filter cover. We'll go ahead and pop this uh, engine cover off here to get to our bolts. Set that off to the side. Now these are T25 um, little bolts here. Two of them that come out easy as pie. Um, you can go ahead and peel this up. Now, I always loosen this clamp here to kind of unsettle it here so we can get it out of the way, allow it to turn and twist. So it'll pop up out of these little grooves in the back. Okay. There is a little clip on the back that I've already forgot about. Too excited about doing the video here. All right guys, so there is a little uh, air filter sensor here on the back of the box. So this is facing the rear of the car. Um, the little quick pro tip on this is take a small flathead screwdriver and you're gonna go up behind the, see this piece right here? There's a little clip. You literally just take your screwdriver up underneath the face of the clip and you should be able to just pull it right off piece of cake just like that. So once you've taken your uh, connector off, you can lay it off to the side and then we can take the box off. All right guys, so remember I loosened this, this band clamp enough so that you can spin this filter box. Um, this thing has ribs on it so it will not come out. Um, well, it will take some force to get it out. So I find that it's just not worth it. You can lift the box up enough and you can pull the filter out. You might have to take a screwdriver around the edge of it here to get it peeled out of there. But just like that, boom, and pull it on out of there. So there's our old filter out. And I always inspect the box. Okay, we've got some crap in there. We're gonna go ahead and vacuum it out here and make sure it's clean before we put a new filter in. Do our due diligence here. All right guys, so this is our brand new filter. This uh, part number is C28004. I don't know how many times I'm going to knock this little light, light off. I'm sure it'll be a couple more. But um, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall it here. I just pry up the box enough that I can slide this bad boy down into its spot. As you can see, it's, it fits nice and snug in there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and peel it back down into our tabs in the, in the uh, engine side, and then back down here like that. So we'll go ahead and tighten up our T25 fasteners. Okay, and remember to put our sensor back on. Boom, just like that. Now we'll go ahead and tighten up our band clamp. 
that's it for the engine air filter. Piece of cake. After that's tight, we can get our tools out of the way and we can put back on our engine cover. All right guys, so next up, we're going to do the dust filter. Um, this one is inside the hood, it's behind your battery. So you go ahead and unlock your, uh, your plastic panel here. It's literally just two latches and we can do this without even taking it out from underneath the, uh, the engine compartment here, or uh, the, what you wanna call it, back up underneath the windshield. Just hold it up with your shoulder and then pop this bad boy out of, out of its spot here. It literally just lifts up and then just pops out of its spot. And then in the back, it hangs on these tabs. So these hook over it and then it snaps into place. Snap over and then into place. So this dust filter is literally just to keep contaminants out from going inside the cabin. Remember, airflow is um, you know from the bottom up through. So bottom up through, so we'll put our new filter on here. So this filter that we put on here um, is uh, a CU25002. Remember, air, airflow is this way. So we put on our put on our filter. You can see airflow going through this way. So go ahead and put this back in the cover. Literally just wedge it down in here. Try not to mess it up too bad here. All right. So it's fit into place here just like that. Piece of cake. Get rid of our old one. Look at the difference. Okay, this is only 40,000 miles. Replace your filters. All right, so now remember it hooks on and then it clips down. So we're gonna put it down in here, put it on and then clip down. All right, I fi figured I'd get you a better, um, a better uh, vantage point here. See these tabs on top? These tabs are what kind of, it hooks over these tabs and then it clips down into place. So you're gonna go up over the tabs and down into place. Here's your battery here. If you're confused at where you're looking at, right in there is the fan inside the cabin, okay? Let's go ahead and put it on here. It's gonna clip down over our pieces. See how it clipped down? Now you can see the tabs out of the top and then literally just press down into place and you're done. All right, I hope that gave you guys a good vantage point there. Um, you can go ahead and bring this cover back down. I like to make sure that this piece is, is lined back up and the rubber's on it, okay? And then we can go ahead and latch it back down into place here. And then you just make sure that um, this little quarter turn plastic thing locks into place and we're good to go. Let's go inside um, the cabin and we'll do the charcoal filter underneath the dash. All right, guys, I'm going to try to do my best in recording this video here. This is your glove box. If you don't know where we're at, um, we're taking off this panel down here um, that's up underneath the dash panel. So you're going to have one screw here, uh, one screw here, and I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure you only have those two screws. So I've already taken one out on the left side. I'm gonna take this one out here, and it's literally a small screw like this, and we're gonna pop our panel down here. Okay, if you're worried about it, there's little clips. Um, they're not really, they're not really gonna hang up that bad on you. So sometimes I fight with this luggage thing on the side. And then there's of course the little, the wire for the light, okay? As you can see here. Okay, so once we get this panel down, try to get it removed for the most part, we're gonna take our little clips off here. These are a pain in the butt, they always are. It doesn't matter how many times you take them off. Uh, sometimes I just snap them out. All right, you can do the same here with the light. Just snap it out of place. That's 
what I do most of the time, okay? Now, I'll reposition the camera here now that, so you can see it now that we've got it out. Okay, so this is directly, um, this is the footwell here. I took the dome light out, okay? And then um, just up here on your airbox. So this is our fan motor here that was uh, shown above. And then you have your charcoal filter here. So I'm gonna do the best I can at getting this filter out of here um, and showing you the every, every bit of the way. So this is a really simple design. It comes right apart. Um, and the filter, you kind of have to crush it to get it up in here. So I'm going to do my best to show you, um, but I have to have the camera in front of me. So it's just one of those things. All right. So this little tab here goes back and forth, as you can see here. Okay. See how it slides? Okay. You just need to slide it out and then it should pop off here one way or the other. Which way did I have it first? Okay. Okay, so so I had it locked on first, okay? So to the left is locked, to the right, it'll let it out. Okay, you see that? The door comes out. I recommend you just keep the door exactly this way oriented here. Just put it on the floor. Now, like I was saying before, it comes out and hits the carpet. So what you gotta do is kind of smoosh it up in here and pull it out. All right, now remember exactly how the filter goes in here. Don't screw this up, okay? Now see how see how the uh, corner was chamfered here on the side, okay? It's got an angle here, okay? Remember, we're gonna put the new filter in just like that. All right, see how this one's angled? We're gonna put it up in the airbox just like, just like this. I'm gonna roll in a part number of this here because I don't feel like reading it off right now while I'm messing with this got to do this with one hand because the camera's in the way so bear with me here but see so you're just gonna kind of smoosh it up into place you don't have any choice here because this carpet is so in the way so just be careful with it keep fighting with it might have to roll my all right now we've got it going, so we can kind of guide it along here. Okay, and it's moving loosely, so that's good. Now, once we get it all the way up into its spot here, we can put our cover back on. <laughs> Remember, you're trying to fight, fight the filter at the same time while trying to put the cover back on. It's a pain in the butt. It's easier when you have two hands. that side on slide this out and get that side on oh close all right so we've got the cover back on that is a fight for sure all right so after I've perspired quite a bit Sweating my butt off and breathing hard in the camera, probably. We're going to go ahead and put our cover back on here. Still breathing heavy. Go ahead and put our sensor back in here. I'm pretty sure that this sensor is the interior uh, temperature sensor, so be careful with that bad boy. All right. If any pros out there watching the video can tell me what that sensor is, shoot it in the comments below. That'd be awesome. Get a pro on here telling us exactly what what it is 
or maybe the pros watch my video to learn how to do something. That would be cool. All right, so now we've got this back up into place here. Get this past the dash here. All right, cool. Boom, up into place. Get our clip here. Okay, a little bit further back, I guess. Okay. Okay. Oh, what are you doing? Okay, boom. All right, cool. Go ahead and put our bolts back into place and let's wrap this video up. All right guys, so as you can tell, a little bit of sweat equity uh, when it comes to doing the cabin filter underneath the dash. That activated car charcoal filter is a pain in the butt, uh, but it needs change. Um, it's something that gets dirty and uh, goes bad after time, so change it. Um, as far as the video goes, if you're looking to see how I do some record keeping on my car, stay tuned for that after the video. I'll roll in a clip of me going through my record keeping book and exactly how I keep the records on my vehicle. So as always, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you're into, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. All right guys, so this is exactly how I keep records on my car. So I like to keep a detailed pass down on everything I've done on the car because it is imperative to figuring out um, some problems from troubleshooting in the future and things like that. So starting off here, I list my car, uh, exactly what it is, the W205, uh, the CW version, or C300W4, um, the VIN number, and then the date I purchased it with how many miles, um, the customer number in the Mercedes computer, um, so they can always go back and see exactly who it was. I mean, this is detailed information here. So on August 15th, 2016, yeah, I did service A, oil change, wiper blades inspection. Um, that's a very, very vague pass down here, but I have the tech number. Um, go in here, service B inspection. Um, this is the last time I actually took the took something to the dealer for them to do things. So I listed out all the part numbers if I were to need to go back or Mercedes ever challenged me and said, well, you didn't use the proper uh, engine oil that Mercedes-Benz recommends. Now, see, I got it right here. This is exactly what was used. Here's the particulate filter that was used. Uh, no, Mercedes, you're wrong. So uh, stuff like check engine light, for a charcoal tank heater, P2400. Uh, so um, I took this in for the dealer for the EVAP emission system. So uh, even over here, um, you know, tires rotated front to rear. I, I say who exactly did the work, the date, the mileage. Um, you know, hey, I torqued the lug nuts to 130 Newton meters and I made sure that I had uh, either double check myself or had somebody double check me. Um, just stuff going back to Marine Corps days and being around the aircraft passed down is absolutely necessary. So I get a little bit more detailed. Sometimes brake pad indicator came on, uh, right wheel or uh, right front wheel inspected wiring checks good, remove sensor, clean connection, um, all that. Uh, I measured the ohms here pin to pin. Um, I come with a very detailed pass down. This is before I handed it off to the dealer. Um, here, this is where you can figure out Lug nuts over torqued by tech 9970221. Uh, the dude torqued my lug nuts to 248 Newton meters. Like ridiculous. He put it on with an impact gun. This is stuff that you go back if, you're, if your car ever went to the dealer. You need to go back and say, hey, these are the things that happened to my car. I know that last time I put the wheels on, they were torqued to 130 Newton meters. Your, your buddy over here torqued him down to 248. That's absolutely ridiculous. So, you know, it's just stuff like that. That's exactly how I keep my pass down. So, you know, even stuff when the dealer has messed up my car, um, you know, I make sure that I've annotated it. So going through the pass down here, uh, when was the last time I did filters? Uh, replace spark plugs, removed air filter. Okay, vacuumed out filter box, replace filter with man part number. Uh, so here's your part numbers. I know exactly what I need to order next time. Replace cabin air filter. There it is, the dust filter. And then uh, replace that stuff. And then I went through and did the uh, activated charcoal filter. So I have all my part numbers. I have exactly when I did it last. Blase, blase. 
the mileage that I did it, stuff like that. So if you keep a detailed pass down in your car, nobody can ever come back and say that, uh, you know, that you didn't do the due diligence um, to keep good records on your car. So um, this, I highly recommend doing this. Um, get yourself a book and start it for your car and, you know, make it a good thing. Boom, piece of cake.